Hi, hello and welcome everyone. Welcome, this is the jingle music playing right now. Everybody excited for this week's news? As always, yours truly, this is Mike. Welcome back to Beyond the Brick. This is the news time every Saturday, 10 a.m. Pacific. We are collecting the news from the past week and trying to get them into one single package for you during the live stream to, for you to enjoy and all this stuff. So, we got some stuff to talk about today. We got the Monkey Kid sets, three new sets that were unveiled. There's a poly bag as well. Uh, a few other things uh, in the world, let me see, there's actually not much really was happening this week, but there's some really interesting things that showed up, and ideas is also a thing we're going to be talking about, because there's new stuff in there. Alright, without further ado, thanks so much for joining, and welcome to News Time with Mike. Okay, dokie, let me just get my music back on. There we go. And, as you guys know, Clone Army Customs. That's right. Clone Army Customs. These guys are sponsoring the streams now. Uh, if you don't know who they are, they are basically a great company doing custom minifigures, custom prints, custom molds, custom everything, you name it. And they're spe specializing in uh, Clone Army minifigures, if you didn't know from the name already. A lot of people are using them. Uh, Solid Brick Studios, the BrickWiz, who is also part of the Beyond the Brick crew and is going to be also working on some cool projects with them. These guys are vouching for their quality and uh, these guys have been helping us here to, uh, at Beyond the Brick with the streams a lot lately. They have new stuff every week. That's the website, clonearmycustoms.com. Check them out. There's the link in the description as well, as well on the screen. And just looking at the new items, I think there is always new stuff added every week or two or so. And you can definitely get the quality you deserve. So check it out and check out the content from creators that are actually using them. Again, Solid Brick Studios, BrickWiz. These guys are really using their minifigures and making sure that the quality is sustained. And it is. It's, it's basically on par with what you expect from a really cool and good minifigure and designs that you are not finding in actual LEGO sets. So thank you so much for sponsoring this stream. Check them out, clonarmycustoms.com. Appreciate it, guys. Thank you, welcome, chat, by the way, welcome. Thanks so much for joining today. You are fantastic. Today we have some news, as I mentioned. We got Monkey Kid stuff, we got some articles from Brickset to go through, we got some stories about certain smaller things and less and more interesting things, but I'm gonna go through everything. Uh, yeah, Monkey Kid Wave 2. Disappointment? We'll see. I didn't really uh, gaze over those sets too much. I just took a peek. Um, but we're gonna just browse through them together right now. By the way, welcome uh, Miron News Lego. Welcome Viapri Project. Welcome Brady Ritvik. Um, yeah, thanks so much guys for joining. Appreciate you being here tonight. Today? I want to say tonight, but today it's morning in California. We are good. How about you guys? Are you, are you having a good weekend? I hope so. All right, let's get to the stuff. So just a quick glimpse. Just a quick glimpse on um, the new Monkey Kid sets. Let me just bring this up. Okay, so basically three sets in total. 80014 Sandy's Speedboat, 80015 Monkey Kid's Cloud Roadster, and 80016 The Flaming Foundry. Uh, Brickset just did them in a real quick succession uh, just an overview but i'm gonna go through every single picture that we have so far uh and we're gonna talk about them for a second so first one here is the sandy's speedboat so uh, this is a 394 pieces set i don't know we have the pricing yet but i'm assuming it's gonna be a 40 dollar set or so um and yeah let's just get through the pictures real quick basically um, it's something that taken, it's something taken from Ninja Go, meets Monkey Kid, meets some Nexonites, that villain lady, uh, what's her name, Queen something, I, I think, <laughs> she, she looks like something taken from Nexonites. And I, after the last set that you're gonna see, uh, that Fortress set, I'm really getting those Nexonites vibes a lot. Um, but yeah, I like the Lego is adding the shots of the lifestyle set, like how it actually looks on the desk. Uh, you can, you, these are coming from all the new sets lately. And I do appreciate it from LEGO, it just shows me how big of a set it is in reference to the environment and all this 
uh, little things. Um, you can even have the dimensions of the set, but you know, it's a playset, so you don't expect anything big. Five inches wide, about nine inches long for the main craft. And the, there's dimensions for everything, including the spider that's including this set. Uh, action shot, we got the uh, the big Sandy minifigure, which is another, should, should have mentioned that it's another great, I think at this point, the cheapest way to get him. But assuming that he's in this set, I think this set will be more like $40, $50, because big, big figs are usually adding a bit to the value of the set, the price especially. Uh, the six shooter, and yeah, this is what I'm talking about. It's about, uh, it's slightly Nexonite, don't you guys think? Nexonite's like some seasons of Ninjago, sort of. Uh, yeah, it's basically a hovercraft. Uh, this is very Ninjago-like weapon, by the way. Um, we get the cat in the set, so attractive minifigures for sure. Um, definitely attractive minifigures to get, just for, for the collection. Um, definitely something to look forward to. What do you guys think? I think this one is okay. I mean, this wave is not as... It's not really as exciting as the first wave. Like the first time the Monkey Kid was announced, everybody was like, whoa. And now I think the anticipation and the excitement just kind of went it down. Um, so seeing new three new sets, maybe there is not much of a hype there, but it's they still I think solid sets. I just don't think they're as good as the first wave. So we have the Monkey Kid's Cloud Roadster. That's a 659 piece set. So it doesn't really look like a, that big of a set. But again, a uh, new design for the vehicle, sort of like an Indy Formula 1 car of sorts. And yeah, I think also Lloyd from Ninjago would like that because his cars are somewhat this design. It's big, you can see the minifigure in relation to the massive engine in the back. I like this one much more than the first set, honestly. Uh, I think there is a, a jet rickshaw, <laughs> if you will. We get the minifigures of Chen Wang, the two civilians, Monkey Kid. Gold Horn Demon, I think, for the first time, and Silver Horn Demon. These are new guys in the wave. Uh, cool uh, hair molds. Overall, decent looking set with um, interesting minifigures. You can see how crazy it looks from the side. You can see the minifigure in relation to the big set. It's gonna be big. I, I like the size of it, honestly. I, I think the size of it is, is quite interesting. Uh, 14 inches long, 7 inches wide. Not too shabby, if you will. Not too shabby. Uh, other vehicles, also the smaller vehicle is in there. Uh, it's not really a rickshaw, kind of looks like a rickshaw, sort of. Um, yeah, but the minifigures are cool, the demons especially are cool. Um, I think I'm more excited for this one. The wheels are ridiculous. It is a ridiculous vehicle, as it's supposed to be. Um, so I like it in that way. Uh, massive... Oh, it's gonna turn when you, once you move the, the, the vehicle, it's gonna actually turn the engine like rotating the back both sides it's kind of cool like a batmobile setup here um and yeah minifigures are solid the demons especially you guys can see the demons here quite quite fun quite fun okay and the last one yeah the, the lifestyle shot you can see it's big the intakes are starting from a jet like a fighter jet or something yep i like it i like this one much more than the first one and the last one is called the flaming foundry uh, 1427 pieces and if you don't see next night's vibes here I don't know this this reminds me of the Fortress. remember the Fortress set the uh, next night's fortress on wheels it is basically the iteration of that fortress in the bull bad guy version you know next night's like the gesture for example had a bunch of like crazy building vehicles sort of and this is coming back to that sort of a theme in my personal opinion it opens up it closes up exactly like the four tracks from Nexo Knights, for me. Uh, minifigures of Uncle Zhang, Mei, Monkey Kid, Princess Iron Fan, Red Sun, and Roar and Growl, the goons of the bad guy. Solid set, um, it has a light brick as well, light brick is included. Um, yeah, pretty cool. I think... Mei, I think that helmet is from collectible minifigure series. That Space Warrior, I think that's kind of like the vibe I'm getting, or the Tron helmets from the Tron Ideas. Um, yeah, I like the front that looks like a bull's face, like a massive Mad Max truck, if you will, but everything else, especially those wheels here, are looking like straight taken from Next Nights. And even the color theme, Next Nights was like blue, purplish, gray, sort of. This one is dark purple. Uh, and the design with the turrets and the six shooters and the wheels, especially looks like something from the next nights especially that stone wave for example stone warriors wave 
Um, you can just zoom this out. Yeah, it's big. It's nine inches high, 21 inches wide when open, six inches deep uh, for the vehicle, that is. Um, good selection of minifigures. I mean, I, I think that minifigures are not exci as exciting as the previous sets, in my opinion. Uh, we get the generic worker as well. Uncle Zhang is like a construction worker taken from, uh, I don't know, Lego City. Uh, but yeah, look at that. It's so next nightsy. And even there's a flyer in there, totally uh, a wink, a nod to next nights, in my opinion. And it's good. It's like, it's basically the bad guys H HQ. We had the Monkey Kid HQ, which was a fantastic set. And this is the answer to that in that lineup, I believe, in my opinion. It kind of opens up in the same way, sort of. And there's even a, a, a bull mech as well included. Yeah, so like a mini miniature version of the Big Mac that we had in the previous wave. All right, uh, yeah, a lot of pictures. Check it out, everything is on brickset.com. You can see how it opens, how it disconnects the vehicle. So it's slightly different operation than the Fortrex, but but also gives you the, the same vibe, in my opinion. Yeah, o almost 1,500 pieces, guys, so big set. Okay, how is the chat doing? That is big, yeah, I know, it's a pretty big set. Big Star Wars Boy, welcome, by the way. GN Challenges, welcome. Thanks for joining. Thanks so much for joining the live news this week. Appreciate you guys. Um, and we get the poly bag. There is a Monkey Kid poly bag revealed, according to the Brick fan. Uh, it, it was given by the Samuel Johnson, Lego designer. Build your own Monkey King 40474 that has only 24 7, 24 7, 24 pieces. Um, and a printed brick for the eyes, which is interesting. So it's basically a mini. Build your own version of Monkey Kid. So something to worth noticing because we talk about Monkey Kid, you know, uh, there is no... Oh, it says the polybag is currently available in Billund. Uh, so you can actually get it in Denmark when you go to uh, to Billund to the LEGO HQ. Interesting, probably in the LEGO house or at the airport. Uh, nice, so yeah, something something unique. Uh, the only unique thing about it is the that printed element for the, for the face. Um, and you get the, the new hilt, the dual-sided hilt that many people are great you know, uh, really want to get for Darth Maul versions, but you want to get the gray one, not the gold one. And this polybag gives you the gold ones, which is still like, the cheapest way to get it, I guess. That specific hilt. Um, okay. Let's see. So that's the polybag. Uh, I got my list here of things to cover. So we got the monkey kit covered. Um, okay, so we got not much really else was happening this week, but we got a few cool articles from Brickset. Um, two worth, worthy, uh, worthy noting interviews. Uh, I'm not gonna go through them like very in detail, but there was an interview with the Razor Crest designers, and uh, they're talking about also the Jedi Fallen Order. So um, they're talking about the possibility of sets from Jedi Fallen Order, the the game. Um, yeah, interesting interview. I read through it. I highly encourage you to check it out. It's on. Uh, it's not very long, so it's basically a, a five minute read. Uh, but it's on brickset.com. They talk about, uh, you know, the, the origins of the Razor Crest set and all this stuff, how Baby Yoda came to be. Um, definitely worth checking out. And the se second interview, it's interesting, probably much more for us LEGO online fans, is the the lore behind the 501st late, uh, Battle Pack. And also they talk about the, with the designer, uh, with the Jens Kronvold Fredriksen and Michael Lee Stockwell, about this specific set. Uh, as we know, the story is also very much in the online community with uh, certain YouTube channels here, uh, MNR and all the, all, all the um, campaigning and everything. So it's inter interesting to um, to read through this interview and see what they have, what the actual designers have to say. Another article that was fun, interesting, is the Anatomy of Star Wars Aliens Part Two. I mentioned the Part One, I think, in the past episode of this news. Um, and they're continuing going through different types of minifigures that Star Wars was introducing uh, during the, during the, you know, different years. Um, so they expand upon this article. Check it out if you are into the history of the Star Wars minifigure. At one point in time, I went through all the Star Wars minifigures um, for a collection back in the day, and uh, I had all of them in my hands at some point, all of them. So it's interesting uh, progress of from the first Yoda head, the first. Jar Jar head up to, you know, the more elaborate aliens as of recently. So definitely an interesting article and uh, focusing specifically on the alien species in the Star Wars lore in the minifigure form. So check it out. Definitely worth noting. Um, 
Brickfan also reported on the uh, visual guide for Harry Potter Magical Treasury now available and I know the book is the book but what's interesting for us is that it comes with the exclusive Tom Riddle minifigure um, which was uh, confirmed a few weeks ago but now the book is actually available uh, I think it's a uh, retail price um, right now it's $20 so pretty good for uh, exclusive Harry Potter minifigure which probably go gonna go up in value quite a bit as the time goes by all right um, let's see. Oh, this is interesting one. I think uh, I really wanted to focus on this story for this week. Um, basically, we had the hundredth birthday, um, you know, of the Lego owner, uh, former Lego owner, Gottfried Kirk Christiansen, the guy behind Mastermind, if you will, behind the brand and the patent. But new information was unveiled by Lego about the design, the patent of the Lego brick that we all know and love today, that made this all happen. Um, Lego actually on the LAN network, the LAN community network, shared a very cool story. I'm gonna uh, hold the screen here briefly on this one. But the main takeaway is that it was believed that the Lego brick was uh, a bit of a... the story behind the patent of the Lego brick was a bit different that they actually unveiled. So what they unveiled right now and confirmed that once the uh, the masterminds behind Lego, that would be uh, Gottfried Kirk, his brother Karl Gorg, and Axel Thompson, the, the masterminds behind transitioning Lego to the actual interlocking system that we know today, were sitting in that room and trying to figure out how to reinforce the connections, the interlocking strength between the bricks, which was not the strongest one in their first design. Um, and this is the actual this is the actual sketch from uh, Gottfried that was trying to figure out what's the best design to reinforce the stud so that the interlocking power is stronger. And Lego showed that this week and um, that's like the sketch he made in, uh, you know, in 1958. And um, there is a story that uh, they were discussing several ideas on how to reinforce the interconnectivity and all this stuff. And that same day, Gottfried handed the sketch to Ove Nielsen, the head of the Lego molding shop. He's instruct he was instructed to make a simple example of the new brick design with two inner clutch tubes. And then, the following day, Gottfried brings his sketches and examples to the office of patent agency Hoffman, Bang & Bothard in Copenhagen for them to get started on the work for applying of a new patent. However, on his way home to Billund, he ponders over the idea of creating a new design for a brick with three inner clutch tubes instead of two. When he reaches Billund, the LEGO HQ, he has come to the conclusion that three tabs will work better than two because it will provide even more better interlocking action. And then he has Ove Nielsen, the guy in the molding shop, create a new brick example by cutting up and gluing together existing elements. So he basically makeshifted a new, new design. And this new three tab tube design is then sent to the patent office with the Express Courier only a few days later on January 28th, 1958 at precisely 1.58 p.m. That's very precise information from LEGO. The LEGO Group files the application for a patent for a new type of building system, a system in which two in several, two or several interlocking plastic building elements can be put together in a great number of mutually different positions, or as it is more widely referred to, the patent of the LEGO brick. Um, and the conclusion is that we're now able, the, the LEGO Group says, uh, we're now able to conclude that it took no more than five days to develop and patent the design of the Lego brick. Only five days to to get the design that we know and love today. Um, an interesting story, it's a great story to share on the 100th birthday of the mastermind behind the Lego brick. I think that's fantastic information. Um, that's the picture of the um, Gottfried Kirk Christiansen, I believe. Um, Cool, I mean, I'm, I'm a kind of a nerd for history of LEGO. I worked for the LEGO group as a brick specialist in a LEGO store, and we were given that information, uh, you know, during the orientation, but that information is new. Um, so check it out, it's on LAN Network, it's accessible to everyone, that article. Uh, pretty cool, and so, congrats, <laughs> LEGO, and uh, uh, yeah, fantastic information for just interesting stuff, right? All right, so that's the story I wanted to share today. Um, let's move on. Mindstorms EV3 is retiring soon. And that's not a surprise because as we know, Mindstorms EV4 was announced and it's actually official. Um, so it's kind of expected to have the Mindstorms EV3 
retired. If you are in love with the previous system or you were, uh, you are not splurging money on the new one and you wanna you still wanna get to the old system of Mindstorms, uh, that might be one of the very last moments to actually get it, especially because of the fact that this set was on and off of stock a lot of the times. So, um, yeah, might be might be harder to get, but the EV4 is coming, so that you know, it's just being replaced. All right. Um, Lego also did uh, a VIP reward center update uh, that was first reported by the Brick Fan. Um, that on J July 8th there was an update to the reward center. I actually went over to the reward center and seen if there's any changes. I think they are changes. I don't remember how it really looked beforehand, but they simplified the logging process. The log uh, login process, as you guys remember, the logging process was a bit weird because it was like you had to go to the lego.com, log in your account, and lego VIP and log again. It was stupid. But uh, now it's sort of like you have all these buttons at the top and the home is loading faster. You can see what you have on hand. Um, you know, the status or any extra promotions they may have right now going on. And you just click to the rewards and it goes, it loads faster overall because previously you had to like wait and a new page open up, it's crazy. So now you have all your discounts at, at, at a glance, all your uh, online discounts, and you know, uh, all the all the real rewards in one place. So that's that's faster. I think it's more responsive. So they did a good update. I don't think the VIP system is where it's supposed to be yet, but they're they're improving every every time they update something. So yeah, logging is better now. Chat is confirming definitely. Um, so good house Lego like this. I'm not the biggest fan of the new VIP system as it was introduced like some time ago, um, but I think improvements are working and it's, it can only get better. They're adding new rewards as we speak. Um, some older rewards were become, became available as I reported last week. So people were able to get like this one still is available. For example, the fountain. Some older poly bags are now rewards. So that's kind of cool. Like I like that they, or the, the brick for example, they're reintroducing the, the old stuff. Uh, so you can, if you missed out on it, you can probably get some of that stuff back as your, as your rewards for your VIP points. All right. Um, before we get to Lego Ideas to finish this episode, Amazon is actually having a pre-order of the Skywalker Saga. And I think that's worth noting. This game is not coming out at least until the end of the year. And many of you are waiting for this. Um, I'm waiting myself. I really want to play this game when it comes out. Um, and it's on pre-order and a discount, so it's down from 60 to $50. And I think it's worth mentioning that even on pre-order you can get a discount. I think it's a pretty good deal if you're waiting for this game. So something for you to know, whoever uh, didn't know about that. All right, Lego Ideas. Um, two things I wanted to talk about before we went down this episode is that the, they had the future gift with purchase contest for the summer 2020 gift with purchase that will be available in the lego stores with your gift with purchase and the winner is the sailing boat sailing ship um so you guys probably remember that i talked about i think this uh, in a previous episode that they had this contest and they actually shown the fan vote counts uh and i think uh, the funny enough i i mentioned that design that i liked the most it's i don't know if it was me or you guys voted from that episode i have no idea what happened but i think i mentioned this design in a, in a previous beyond the brick uh, episode of the news so maybe you got influenced but this set got 887 votes only uh, eight votes more than this one which I liked too so I liked both of these and I have no idea if that was you guys voting on this because we mentioned it or it was just like it's actually a very good design so that's pretty funny so this one will become a gift with purchase which I'm happy for two dolphins really cool looking boat a brick build sale I can see this one as a very good mini gift with purchase set for sure for summer all of these were great, uh, but yeah, this one was by far my favorite design, so I'm happy that it actually became a thing. So if you guys voted because of me talking about it, thanks. <laughs> Thank you. All right, and um, the last thing I want to talk about is this week, I think we only have one idea set in the 10,000 Club. Usually it's like two, three sets as of last few weeks. It's kind of crazy, um, but it's only one, so that's good or bad, I don't know, but Lately, Ideas was slumped with approved sets for review stages. Discworld from Terry Pratchett. Uh, if you haven't read Terry Pratchett, this design is coming from Brickhammer, by the way. Terry Pratchett is a, is a, is a very well-known and very quirky and interesting writer. Uh, he, he basically made a whole 
lore of the Discworld and very cool novels that are somewhat humorous and science fiction and very, very crazy. It's like, it's Harry Potter, but crazier, much crazier. Um, so basically the lore is that in the Terry Pratchett's lore, the Discworld is the lore, the lore, the world that the characters are living in. And the whole story is that it's a flat earth. No conspiracy theories here. It's a flat earth, a disc being carried by a star turtle, the great Atun, and that has four elephants on his shell, and these four elephants are carrying the disc world. Terry Pratchett, everybody. So, yeah, that's actually in the books, um, and it's a model of this belief of this design. Um, so, kind of cool, very quirky model, interesting story. I think might be a fun uh, lore to pick up by Lego. Uh, especially the fa by the fact that these books are widely popular. As the designer states, over 80 million books sold in 37 languages. Yeah, that is that is a big lore. It's it's up, up there with you know, the Tolkien and all these fantasy uh, realms. Uh, 2650 pieces according to the designer. So, yeah. There's the city of Ankhmor Park. Uh, I, I read some Terry Pratchett, but not all of it. I had friends who were really into it, but I know some of the lore. Um, fantastic design and I think very interesting story and topic to, to, to see in LEGO Ideas. Uh, it's nothing that we've ever seen before. So definitely the unique factor, the cool factor, <laughs> uh, is in this for sure. Right? I, I think it's very, very much so. Um, interesting. Very, I, I would say it's, it's weird and quirky, but interesting. But the whole third project is weird and quirky and interesting. So if you guys... If you guys don't know what it is, overall, just pick up uh, one Discworld novel and read through it. You're gonna laugh, you're gonna be weirded, about, weirded out about it. It's it's very quirky lore to go through. And I like it for the, for the way it is. So definitely seeing this design might be interesting in LEGO. All right, that's gonna be it for the news. Uh, thanks so much for joining, by the way. Thanks to chat, Superfrog. Thank you, Jacoby. Thank you, Star Wars fan. Studio Brickton, you guys thanks are here, thanks for joining. Hit the like, uh, make sure you, you click the, the likes and everything, because if you support our episodes here, we're gonna make more of them. Uh, we're gonna keep our sponsors and all this stuff. So make sure you support the content so we can do this every week on Saturday, 10 a.m. Pacific. Um, and again, much, much love to the Clone Army Customs, uh, clonearmycustoms.com, minifigures, helmets, you name it. They, they don't only have this, it's not only uh, Clone, Wars, Clone Wars stuff, it's also uh, custom armors for superheroes. Uh, Halo is here, gaming stuff. Uh, again, they're expanding their inventory as we speak, honestly. It's, it's so much more added every time I check out the store. So check it out, thank you so much for sponsoring the stream, so, Clone Army Customs and for sponsoring the channel. You guys are awesome. And of course, Check out, you know, the links below. There's a merch store. You can buy merch from Beyond the Brick, like the mugs, for example. Oh, you don't see the mug. There is the mug. See? That's that's right here. You can buy those mugs, support the channel and my work and our work, uh, everything. You can check out the links below for my own channel, The Cool Factor. I, I do also things um, in this in this realm of LEGO community. Um, and yeah, I guess I hope you guys are gonna have a fantastic weekend. That's gonna be it for this episode. Thank you so much for joining Overlord, Overload Place. Thank you, uh, Fin the Lego Dude. Thank you, Simo Simon. Thank you as well, Studio Brickton. Thanks for the news, Mike. It's nice to get all this info in one place. It was nice talking to you all. Yeah, as, a, as always, this episode lives on the channel as a VOD recording. So if you miss anything, that's gonna be actually rewatchable. So we're not removing those episodes. It's actually living uh, as a separate video after I finish. So thanks so much for joining. Have a wonderful weekend. Stay safe, stay healthy, wear a mask and do all these things. And I think we just got a donation, which I'm not used to because we don't really get donations on this stream, but we got a Viapri project with a 9.99 donation. Great stream, love your work. Dude, thank you so much. That goes towards supporting our work here at Beyond the Brick. I appreciate you very much. Um, yeah, we're, we're trying our best here. We're, we're making content during these hard times for you guys, so you have to, something to enjoy at your homes. I very much appreciate your support, VIP project especially. And you all, all you guys just watching these episodes, clicking the likes, you know, the more traction we can get, the sponsors are happy. Um, and check out the Clone Army Customs, definitely, because they are really 
uh, going out of their way to support our channel here during these hard times and I'm, I'm more than grateful for everything they do for us um, and uh, for you guys just watching our videos and doing all this stuff for us. So thank you and stay safe really have a wonderful weekend again appreciate the support with the $10 donation. Um, I'm not used to it. I'm the oh, donation. Thank you so much guys. All right. Have a wonderful weekend. Wear a mask. Stay distant. Stay vigilant. Stay healthy. And turn the notifications on. <laughs> All right. You guys are fantastic. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out. Bye.